Hey, welcome back to Nilly's Bonsai. Hope you're doing well. Got an exciting project for us today. I'm going to be trimming back and repotting this hawthorn. Some of you may know this as a, a Mayflower, um, kind of locally, that's what we call them. I was reading an article by Graham Potter and he had mentioned it being called a moonflower, which I thought was actually really nice, like a nice name for it. And he, he had a whole list of other names. Um, but locally we call them May. That's because obviously they flower in the month of May, give or take. This was one I collected three years ago. Now I haven't done nothing with the root since. It's, it's growing very happily in there. All I've done is branch selection, gone back, trim bits back. I've tried to obviously uh, create some ramification. Now that's, that's three years worth of it there. So it has created like a nice tapering and branches and, uh, and some ramification now is actually obvious. So this has been quite a success for a, a novice like me to be fair. I would actually recommend this um, this species of uh, hawthorn, you know, uh, for a beginner really, other than the thorns, which can be a little bit vicious, um, which I'm quite used to being a gardener. It really is a, a bulletproof, once you've got past the selected, uh, the, the collection part of the tree, uh, it really is a, a bulletproof species really. Um, it back buds profusely, it chucks out loads of new growth, so there's always things to do on there. And you know, you, like I said, you can create branch, uh, branch structure and ramification fairly quickly. For a three year old tree, you know, this is actually uh, looking quite something. If possible, I'd like to put it into this homemade pot that I've made. Now, if this works out to be too small or doesn't look right, we won't do it, but it's a possibility. And either way, I'd like to show you guys that pot. It's quite nice. It's a cement pot that I've made with a rugged texture. And I think actually it would complement this tree. Maybe not the color, but the actual texture of it. So, you know, let's see how we go when we, when we knock this back. And if not, we'll cut the pot down and do something again there with it. So I've got my small set of branch cutters here. I think these will be ample for the job. I want a nice clean cut and as close to the bud as possible. It's worth pointing out with uh, Hawthorne, if you have multiple shoots coming from one area, like this set of three here, say, or you keep cutting back to the same point, the actual uh, area can become quite nubby and look quite unsightly and create little inverse taper spots. So it's something that definitely to bear in mind when you're pruning and you will occasionally have to go back past an area, um, which will in the end will create greater ramification, I'm sure. So I just want to start on the, on the apex area of the tree. Uh, they are very dominant at the top here, as you can see, this really has pushed out. But where I was growing this new leader, I've grown this whole section here and then another little part here as well. Uh, I have kind of encouraged to have that kind of push in it. I think we're at the stage now where I actually want to take that, you know, take that um, energy out at the top now and try and slow that down a bit. And again, if we do get it into that pot, that's going to aid this process quite a bit as well. These here should be dormant buds there. So I think I'm just gonna cut these ones off up here. We'll neaten them up, we'll neaten those up shortly. And again with this part here, this is where we might actually require some wire, but so you can see if that was twisted around a little bit there, that actually becomes more usable, all of that. So that might be one for a, for a guy wire down to another branch there. So I think I'm going to keep all of those for now, but I will sh just shorten them a little bit. Obviously we want to create a triangle out of this in the end. And I do want to create ramifications, so I don't want to um, leave them too long. So there's a little bit of uh, work there on the top. And again, I'm no expert at this, so we're, we're going to take our time and just get it right. I'm going to take right in that one nice and clean I don't say I'll probably clean that one up when this one's healed a little bit I don't want to create too much of a wound at the top there so I'm just going to keep that nice and clean on this side where we took that branch out now these branches are all sitting quite nicely where I want them so I don't think by adjusting them with wire or anything they're going to really have to change so I just want to now begin to bring that triangle in and I think some of these here. I'm just going to start nipping these back to get an idea of that triangle. And like I say, there's no harm in leaving them a little bit longer and going back, right? It's when you cut them too short, you're going to have a problem. And again, we just want to bolster that triangle now. So I'm going to hold it where I believe it's going to be. There's a nice bud there. I 
think that one wants to go somewhere like that for there. So you see it's, it's a nice triangle there. Obviously these are a little bit long still, I think. I'm gonna do it in a couple of stages so we don't crack the wood. And I'll put a little bit of paste on these as well to try and aid the, the recovery. Now it might be debatable whether this should be done in autumn or now. I've actually had pretty good success with this pruning back in spring. I know the uh, the energy's kind of lost because it's been sent back from the trunk up, but these are quite feisty things. I'll give it a good feed once it's recovered from repotting. So the buds on here, I don't know if it's the correct way of describing it, but they're obviously staggered uh, instead of opposed. So it's kind of handy because you can actually see a nice direction um, you know, for selection there. And it's worth taking a bit of care into that because obviously it'll make things easier to wire around or manipulate later on. I think I'm just going to knock these back because it's quite a dominant branch. Got a little bit of growth there that will create some ramification and then maybe next time I'll go in a little bit further. So there we go, that's actually looking fairly triangular. We haven't applied a piece of wire to it yet and we sorted out a lot of the little fault areas. I'd just like to start by saying thank you to Neil for me wire cutters. I've obviously been struggling on with a couple of uh, more industrious tools. Not that there's been a problem with that, but it definitely makes it a little bit easier and a little bit, you know, you can get in there and these are a little bit more precision. Now, these branches that we got to actually wire, there's not much to do. Um, I've actually turned it around to face you guys. But what I want to do is just bring these two in a little bit, maybe like set a little piece of movement there, you know, a, a slight angle on it. Um, but they have become quite woody. I don't want to move them much. So we want to bend those, that one up and that one down. So I think, actually I'll come under there. I'm gonna come around there around that knobbed area. Just lock that off there. This one I want to come up, so I think that's a good position in there for that. Again, this is a lot easier to do while the, the foliage is off the tree and you can actually see the structure. Just avoiding all those buds as well. And obviously places where I can see there was a leaf join, but no bud at the moment. I'm dodging just in case we get a nice bud to pop his head out. Let's give that a blast and see if that's going to hold. If not, we'll add another piece. So I want to bring them in together a little bit, which is done. So that's a good start. And then I wanted to bring this one up a tiny bit. And that one can come down a little tiny bit there. We just create some interest there. And like I say, if we have to shorten that at some point, we will do so. There was one other offender, wasn't there, that we need to sort out. And that's to bring this piece up. So again, we'll, I'm gonna spin it right round so we can hopefully film it and I can work with it. that. It's actually brought them together a little bit just literally doing that job. I just want to continue that up a little bit more. Maybe we'll bring that out and we can directionally prune that as and when. It's kind of nice that. And I think that's the branch that we maybe wanted to lift. I think this will be one in the end that actually we maybe cut back because it's quite coarse versus that one but you know I'm not going to rush these decisions. So I'm very happy with that for now. Um, light is beginning to fade on us a bit so without further ado should we get out of the pot and see what we've got going on in there. So we've got a lot of new white roots there and I'm guessing these have started pushing out this year because they've not hardened off at all. Not much out of this top side here. 
We'll clean it back a little bit, see what we've actually got hiding in there. And if it does turn out that that pot is not going to be suitable, then we'll, we'll, you know, cut down that plastic pot and just make it a little bit shallower for now. I do want to kind of restrict the roots a little bit now we're starting to try and refine this tree. I feel that's the correct thing to be doing now. Keep an eye open for any nasties as well. There shouldn't be because I'm super on the ball with things like vine weevil. I'm really actually really pleased with that because I couldn't quite remember, you know, what was going on in that pot, to be honest. You can see there, it was cut flush from collection. They've got loads more radial roots coming out of there. Now, maybe that could have actually done with one more year in that pot. It wouldn't have hurt, I don't think. It wasn't really actually pot bound, although it looked like quite a few roots around the, around the edge of the pot. Um, there was a large root that I cut there. It's kind of just calloused over. Um, it hasn't died off though, so that's good. But yeah, a healthy, you know, fine root system form in there. So I'm, I'm really quite pleased with that, to be honest. I'm gonna offer it up to that pot. I'm, I'm now having second thoughts about this altogether, whether it's gonna go in there. It's a bit too much to ask on this, on this occasion, I think. Maybe in a couple of years. The pot does look a bit small for the tree as well. You know, it's, it's got to hold enough moisture. I, I just wondered really what was going on in that pot. But it's been nice to show you the pot either way. I've got a toothbrush here. Not my current one, you'll be happy to hear, but let's see if we can get a bit of that moss moving now. There's a little bit of residual moss there, but when the plants settle down, I'll maybe just put a 50-50 little wash of vinegar over that. 50-50 to water, shall I say, sorry. And um, I should kind of knock that back. So I think this year now, I think we can safely say with these old secateurs, I can actually go in. Now I can see forks of new, new root growth there. I'm gonna take some of these back a bit further. I don't say we can go a little bit further with that one. We've got a lot of fine root here, so we don't have to be too scared. That's actually more balanced there. I'm hoping that we get a few more back from here. But certainly those higher ones, they, they will, you know, to, to actually relieve that piece of trunk and get it out of the ground, they're not going to be suitable. But I think a few more years in a slightly smaller pot, and I think we'll end up with some more roots pushing out there. I'm just going to go in with these scissors and take out a few more of these more dominant bits that are only going to get folded over in the pot. This is obviously going to push out quite well. Maybe it wouldn't harm to actually leave that in the pot for another year, but three years seemed like quite a while. I know one of the other hawthorns I got actually kept drying out this summer so either the soil mix is slightly wrong or it needs repotting for a collected tree that you know you, you don't have the control that you have with a seedling you can cut the tap root early on get an almost perfect root flare then you have to do something drastic drastic to mess up but this is getting you know it's quite an honest spread there now isn't it we've made a cut on that thicker root just where that fork and there's a bit of growth there no, in my luck, they'll all grow from there again, but hopefully we get some more forks from that root and we can be able to push that back a little bit further at some point. I wouldn't want to just kill the root off for the sake of it. I'm half tempted to take a little bit more out of this chunky root here, just because I can see new, new unions now coming off of that. So I will cut that, just because I want to keep driving it back. And really, I'm going to leave it there. You know, we haven't took much off really, but there wasn't much need to take loads off. So. You know, we don't need to go setting it back further. If we get that potted up now, back into a, I'm gonna go into a slightly lighter mix, but you can see how that, that loamy soil there has just done a great job, really. Maybe with a bit more compost, these roots would have been a bit more dominant, but the growth would have been a lot coarser as well, I'm sure. So, you know, I'm not gonna stray too far from this mix, really, I don't think at this stage. We're kind of going back into development with this. So 
very familiar with my videos with the scene I've been experimenting with this wood fired crushed brick seems to act like a, a lava rock um, slash pumicey kind of thing really it's a really open porous texture it absorbs moisture quite nicely but can it dries out you know at a rate as well it's not doesn't sit like laden with water but it's quite a nice open texture even when you compress it like that there so it'll be interesting to see how that compares there is also a, a, a very similar soil to that one there that the tree's already in added into there and some compost as well so still like a development mix if you like I'm going to go in with a drop of that now. I assure you it's not as crazy as it seems as crushed brick. I'm having fairly good results for this. I'll bring up a little bit more of that there. Just enough to lift them over so we can work. I'm going to give it a little bit at the bottom there. And then I always like to mound this up in the middle helps create that, you know, tapering uh, root flare. So we're just going to look for where it's convenient to send those wires. So we've got a couple of chunkier roots there. I don't think we can do any harm to. this one here there's nothing to really go to there without just trashing nice um finer roots so i'm just going to hook it around there this might be right or wrong but literally the light is fading there's actually a firm route to go to there so it's just kind of pulling it that way and using it like a lever I don't know if there's a right or wrong way of doing that when you haven't got chunky roots on the other side. But all of a sudden it's kind of held it. So I think where we are in the day, we're going to live with that. See how quickly that water drains away there. I'm a bit annoyed about the uh, the plotting angle, I'm not gonna lie. Well not the plotting angle, just how central it is in the pot. But um, with the light how it is, and I don't wanna leave this vulnerable and out of a pot, pot after all three years hard work on it. Um, but no, really quite pleased with that. And I'm, I'm enjoying that shape that we started to create there. There's a couple of pieces of wire that have kind of got them branches where I need them. If we have to put a little guide wire on there, we will do it at a later date. And as these start to bud out, I'm more than happy to trim them back a little bit further or to a healthy bud and, uh, and continue the next stage of this tree. Well, I think the sun's cool time on that one. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that though. Really, really enjoyed this one. And it was a great opportunity to actually film this one and share this one with you. Because from start to finish, and unfortunately the pot would have all been created by myself so it would have been actually a nice thing but we can't do things wrong for the sake of it looking nice just you know to have it um so i'll set about making a new pot and hopefully make a video for you guys with that as well so if you have liked the video or potentially learned something from it and hopefully you have and especially if you watch to this this point in the video uh, if you could consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe a share that would be really handy and it'll help like-minded people find it and if you are a new viewer maybe consider uh, subscribing to the channel Thank you very much.